Hi guys, so this is a very quick video all about the uh, radio transmitter and receiver that I made using an old 27 megahertz uh, transmitter handset um, and converted to use an Arduino and the NRF24L. Um, as you can see here, this is the actual transmitter itself. Uh, these are one of the old ones that used to have the crystal and the, the, the metal aerial that used to stick out the back. Um, I'm going to do this video in three parts. The first part is just showing you the, the, the basics of what I've got. I'm then going to undo both the transmitter and the receiver just to show you inside. And then thirdly, I'll go through the code just to explain uh, what I've done and, and how it works. Um, so this is the actual uh, transmitter itself. It's an old two-channel transmitter, so it's basically just got a throttle and it's got the rudder. Now the throttle um, used to be one that automatically returned to the centre, um, but I've taken the spring out because I want to be able to have this to stop exactly where I want it to. Um, also, I've added a potentiometer down here, which gives me a third channel, um, and this is what's used for the lift for the, for the hovercraft model that I'm using it on. And then I've got a switch at the top, which is literally just an, an, an on-off switch um, for a, a kind of a fourth channel, as it were. Um, but the Arduino that's used inside of this will allow me to use up to 32 channels if I want to. Um, but I don't really need that many channels. So uh, this does the thrust, that does the rudder, this does the lift. Um, and this one I programmed so that if the um, receiver loses uh, transmitter, um, lose if it loses signal from the transmitter then it will um, automatically switch everything off but if this is switched on it'll keep the hover motor going uh, so that if I'm using it on a lake or something like that it won't suddenly sink um, so that's what I've done that for um, so if I take that one away for a moment put that on the side um, so this down here is the receiver um, it just happened to be a box um, that I had from a project uh, many years ago that I, I made um, for something else um, and it's just simply uh, a box with an Arduino and an NRF24 um, with the powered aerial sticking out the side there. Um, I've got an on-off switch on the end, I've got a, a green light which comes on to give, show there's power and I've also got a, a red light on the end here which comes on if it loses signal. Um, I've also got a bit of strip board here uh, which I've soldered some pin headers to and these I've used to connect the different um, wires to the thrust motor, the steering servo, and the ESC for the lift motor. Um, the ESC for the lift motor also provides power into here through a battery elimination circuit. Um, now this one here also has a battery elimination circuit, which is why, as well as a three pin header to do earth, power, and signal, I've got one that just does earth and signal. Uh, which means then that I'm not to, to put in two lots of battery elimination circuits into the one box. Um, so that's essentially it. There's not really a lot to it. Um, it's not the neatest of cutouts or the neatest of boxes, but it's just something I wanted to throw together more than anything else just to make sure that it works. And actually it does work. So now I'll open them up and I'll show you inside them. Okay guys, so uh, now we'll move on to the innards of uh, both the transmitter and the receiver. I'll start with the transmitter to start off with. Um, I've taken the, the screws out ready. Um, in the back here, just to show you, I've got the existing battery compartment, which I've got eight uh, AA cells in. Um, I was thinking about using just a 9 volt PP3 battery, but because it doesn't fit in there and this was all set up, I thought I'd just go ahead and use it anyway. So. Uh, let's just open this up, which I need to do carefully so I don't break it. There you go. Right, so um, if we look at this side here, uh, this is the back of the battery compartment where you can see that I've got the positive and negative wires coming off. Uh, and because these are on two loops of metal, which originally touched the circuit board on this side, um, I've just put some tape over there so that they don't risk shorting anything out. Okay, so if we turn that around so you can have a, a good look in there. Um, so we've got the original joysticks. Um, we've also got a potentiometer, which uh, I showed you on the front. And we've got a switch here, which uh, these are all addition, the switch and the potentiometer I've added in separately. 
Um, also in here, uh, we've got a, a buck boost converter in here, which supplies the power. We've got an uh, Arduino Nano down here. Uh, and here we've got the NRNF 24L uh, with the aerial. And also there's a baseboard down here, which provides an interface between the five volts for the power and Arduino through to 3.3 volts on this particular board here. Um, so the power from the, the batteries here comes through the buck boost converter. Um, the output from this is a constant five volts. So whilst it's above five volts, it'll take the voltage down. And if the voltage drops below five volts, it'll boost it up to the five volts that I need. Um, this little thing came off of eBay. I think it was about three quid or something like that. It wasn't overly expensive. Um, what I've done then is the there's a switch on here which is tied into this board as well and essentially when the switch is turned on it forms a bridge uh, which tells the circuit to, to turn on. We've then got the uh, positive and negative come out of there um, and that then powers the circuit. It's a little bit messy in here but essentially what I've done is I've tied all of the positives together and all of the negatives together and then taken them to the various places. So we've got uh, positive and negative going to either side of the two joysticks. We've got uh, positive and negative going to a green light in the front here, which I've just got tucked in, uh, which shows you the power when it's turned on. And there's a resistor in there as well, just to, to drop the voltage. It also provides the five volts power to the NRF24 base module, which then powers the transmitter and takes five volts through to the uh, Arduino and also five volts for both sides of the potentiometer there. We then have a signal out in the middle of the two uh, joysticks, a signal out from the middle of the potentiometer, all of which go to the Arduino, and then this switch is tied on one side to negative, and then the other side is a line which goes to the Arduino, and there's an internal pull-up which I've set in here, um, so that essentially when it's off, it's pulled high, and then when the switch is flicked, it takes it low, which gives you the two states you need for this switch. Uh, so as you can see, there's not really a lot to it. Um, fortunately, I was able to use the original uh, mounting fixing there for the old aerial uh, to put the new NRF24 module into. Um, and these bits here are just stuck in with some uh, foam double-sided pads. Um, but the whole thing fits together. It's not the prettiest looking thing in the world um, because I've really thrown it together because I wanted to make sure it works rather than spending hours on something that didn't work. Um, so that's the transmitter. Okay, so moving on to the receiver. Um, this is a box that I happen to have um, from doing an old project. Um, when the kids were younger, I, I made a green light, which basically was a timer, uh, which came on when the kids were allowed to get up with just this little green light, because um, they weren't old enough to tell the time and it saved us lots of early mornings. But anyway, that's a different story. So I've reused, recycled this box. Um, I already had some holes in the top here which I had other um, LEDs in for different purposes and buttons and what have you, which is why I decided to cut this section out. Um, but if I open it up so we can look inside, um, there's not really a lot to it. So again, I've got a, the light at the top, which is just an indication that there's power going to the circuit. Um, the heart of everything is the Arduino Nano, which is sat in the bottom. I've got the NRF24 module here, which I've just drilled a hole through just to hold that there. Um, and again, the module plugs into this baseboard, which just converts the five volt signal and power coming in into the 3.3 volts, which is required for the actual transmitter itself. Um, so on the, the back side of this strip board here, um, the the different lines, um, so you've got the the earth line and the positive line, which are, are tied together individually, so all the power is together and all the um, earth is together. This then runs through a switch so that I can turn it on and off, and then the power then goes to this board and this board here. Um, additionally, there's a signal line, which I've taken three points off of for the throttle, for the steering, and for the lift motor. And they go in through these three cables here uh, and just plug into the, the Nano. 
Um, in addition, I've also got a, a red light here, which again is plugged from a signal line to the earth, um, so that if this loses signal, the little light will come on just to show me that that isn't working. There's not really very much to this at all. Um, as I explained uh, somewhere else, that this the the channel, this receiver and everything does allow up to 32 channels. Um, so you could have a lot more channels in through here. Um, equally, some of those channels can be used for things like mixing. And uh, in the case of my one, I've got the switch which determines whether the hover motor stays on if signal is lost or not. Um, so there's not really much to it. The, this on the back here is just to stop any um, thing touching and touch into the five volt power. Um, and I put some hot glue in various places just to hold stuff from moving. But that really is all there is to it. Uh, it's not the prettiest of things, um, but it is very simple. Uh, so that's that. And like I say, the whole, the whole power is derived from the power from the battery elimination circuit, which in this case I've taken from the lift motor, um, which runs the five volts through, which is picked up for use for the servo and for the Arduino and this as well. Um, so that's essentially it. So next we'll move on and we'll talk about the code. Okay, so now we're going to move on to part three in this little section, um, and I'm going to go through the code that I'm using uh, for my transmitter and receiver. Um, the first thing you'll notice at the top of the screen uh, for the transmitter code is that I've included three libraries. I've included the SPI library, which is included with the Arduino anyway. Uh, that's so that um, the Arduino can communicate with the NRF24 module. And there are also two other libraries, the nrf24lo1.h and the rf24.h. Now, in order to use those, you need to use the library manager, um, which I've brought up here. And if you type in nrf24, you'll find the rf24 library. Um, and you can see on here that it's installed. But if it isn't, then you will need to install it using this button here. Uh, and obviously you can select different versions, but unless you have any reason to select anything different, um, you might as well go with the, the latest version. Okay, so we'll close the library manager. Um, so back to the transmitter code. Uh, once we've got the libraries included, uh, we use the line RF24 radio 9 and 10. Now they're two of the lines that the radio use for communication and they just determine which pins that you use for the CE and the CSN. Uh, lines. Um, the other lines are dedicated uh, to where they need to go, which uh, in the case of my uh, Nano were on 11, 12 and 13. Um, but there are plenty of sites out there that give information on different ways of communicating uh, between the NRF24 and the Arduino Nano for connecting it up. Uh, next I give a constant byte address. Um, now this is a value which needs to just be the same basically on the transmitter and the receiver. So it could be any number you like, but on this one I've just gone with one. Um, I've then uh, initiated variables for the X value and the Y value, which is the throttle and the um, steering. Uh, for the switch value, which is the switch on the top, pop value, which is obviously the potentiometer. And I've created an array called joystick, and it's got uh, four positions in it which will be enough to uh, store the X, Y, switch and pop values. Um, as I've mentioned before you can have up to 32 bytes that you can transfer across um, and if you want to increase the amount of data you send this is the number that you would increase. I've also allocated the inputs for the um, throttle and steering switch pin and the potentiometer to the, the pins that you see here doesn't have to be necessarily those pins on yours, you can choose whatever you like, but that's just what I happen to have chosen. So next down, go into the setup, and I've set the X pin, Y pin, pop pin, and switch pin as all inputs, and the switch pin I've got to pull up so that it will naturally hold it at a positive value until such time as the switch is thrown, and then it'll go down to ground and, and give a, a zero. Um, I've got a serial monitor on here, um, and it, that was just really for debugging. You don't need that once you've got it up and running, but you'll find it useful um, to have that in the, the first instance. 
Okay, uh, then we turn on the radio module, we open the, the writing pipe and with the address which we've set up here, which is this one here. Obviously you could hard code that down here, but if you need to change it, it's not good practice to do that. Um, I've set the level to the maximum. Uh, you can set a maximum and minimum uh, to, for the power output. And, and I've just got mine on maximum because then that way there's no risk of it dropping out. And I've set the data rate at 250 uh, kilobits per second, but you can also go up to two megabits per second. Uh, but the lower the rate, uh, the less chance there is of any errors. Um, and then stop listening comes at the end. Uh, and this basically just uh, sets this so that instead of listening for any information from another receiver, it is just transmitting, not receiving. Once we set that up, we go into the, the main loop. Um, we read the X value. And then if the X value is above or below the thresholds I've set, it will set it at those uh, maximum minimum thresholds so you don't get any wraparound. Um, and again, the same on the, same on the Y values, plus and minus, and the potentiometer, plus and minus. Um, you don't have to do those if you don't want to, um, but you do run the risk that when you then send those that information, um, that you will end up getting a wraparound value. Um, so if, for example, if you turn hard left, you might find that it's below the required amount, which will actually flick it round to the upper end of the scale, which effectively wants it to go hard right. Um, now the values for the throttle, for the X value, and for the steering, the Y value, I determined by plugging in the, uh, the outputs from both of those to my nano, and then just opening the serial monitor, and then whilst moving the joysticks, making a note of what the minimum and maximum values were. Those values may well be different for whatever you use. Uh, the potentiometer, on the other hand, should only be between 0 and 1023 because that's the 10-bit the ADC that's used for the analog to digital conversion. Okay, so once we've got those values, um, <coughs> excuse me, so I've got the uh, X value on there. Uh, the Y value we're reading as well. Now, actually, I can see I had an error because that Y value, if I cut that and put that up there, We'll go down there otherwise I won't get rid of that wraparound value for that one there you go that was an error on my part so I've changed that now so uh, that's there so the switch value we just read on the digital line whatever the, the switch pin is uh, and we do a not on there so basically if it's reading a zero it's a high we're reading it as being on and if it's a one we're reading it as being off just grabbing a cup of tea while I'm doing this uh, and then the potentiometer value or the pot value again we're we're reading, reading that in. Um, and again, that should have gone up the top. So there you go, that's my bad. Let's just put all of those at the top and then we've got that sorted. Nothing like doing these things on the fly, is there? Right, so once we've got the values and we've determined that they don't run over or, or back, we then go down to allocate the variables to the different uh, parts of the joystick array. Now I've determined that point or oh, the first uh, input or zero in the array is the X value, one is the Y value, two is the switch value, and three is the pot value. It doesn't matter what order you do them in, as long as whatever your order you do them in here is the same order at the other end. Now also because the values on the X value and Y value uh, go above 255, uh, and 255 being the maximum of a byte, we use the map command to map that range from 0 to 255. So whatever you end up with, it will end up with a number between 0 and 255. The switch value I haven't mapped just because it's either a 1 or a 0, so it doesn't really matter. Uh, I've used a zero print line just to literally print out the details, and again, that's just for debugging purposes. You can comment those out once you've done what you need to do. Once you've done that, you do radio right, joystick, which is the array size of joystick, which again, just shows you that you're sending four bytes. Uh, and then I've just put in a delay so that it's not literally sending it, boom, 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 boom. It's just, it, it does have a little bit of a gap, a bit, bit of breathing space. Okay, so before I go on, I will just save that. So then we'll bring up the uh, receiver. 
and I shall put viewing here. Um, so we'll start with the receiver. Now on this one, because I'm using servos, or because I'm using servo outputs, although that does equate to the ESC as well, you need to use the servo library. Uh, SPI again for communication, and then the NRF24L01.h and the RF24.h libraries, which you need for the all the information to do with communicating directly with that. But all you need to do is make sure the library is installed and then include those particular headers. Um, again, we initiate the radio with pins 9 and 10 for the CE and the CSN. We've got the byte address at 1, um, so that matches the transmitter, but as long as it's the same on both, it doesn't matter what number that is. Um, and then I've got variables for the X and Y value, switch value and the pot value, and I've also got defaults. Now, the defaults I've put in are what... Um, the, each of the uh, things will default to if there is absolutely nothing being transmitted. So we then have the de uh, define the joystick array, <coughs> which is a byte array again, because all, all the uh, byte it will be from zero to two hundred fifty-five, which are byte values. Um, and then I've done the LED pin as pin five. The LED pin is basically the the red LED that tells me if there is no signal. And then I've uh, I've created three servos, so rudder, thrust and hover, and I've got a counter in here which we'll come to in a moment. So we go into the setup, we set up the pin mode of the LED pin as output. We, Because we're using the servo library, you don't allocate a pin as such, you attach a servo, so I'm using pins 2, 3 and 4 for the thrust, rudder and hover pins. Um, I've got the serial monitor here again, which is just for the purpose of um, debugging and I've got a higher rate on this one just because I wanted to to, to play with that um, but again that can be commented out once you've finished. We begin the radio, we open the pipe with the address, we then set the level uh, which again can be maximum or minimum, data rate which I've got matching the, the one for the transmitter and we got start listening so this is a receiver not a transmitter. So we then go into the main loop. Um, so we have an if statement, so if the radio is available, as in if there is something being transmitted, we go through this section, and if there isn't, we go down through the other section. Okay, so we'll, we'll come through that in a moment. So, so if the radio, radio is available, we write a low value to the LED pin so that the red LED is off. We set the counter to zero, and then we read in the data, which is the joystick data. So for the X value, we map the joystick data, which is between 0 and 255, to a value between 1000 and 2000. Um, this is because when you uh, write anything to a servo or to an ESC, generally the values are between 1000 and 2000 milliseconds. Um, we then create, I've created a temporary byte, um, which I've called 255 minus joystick 1, which is minus the Y value and then the Y value becomes that temporary value mapped to between 0 and 3000. Now the reason I've done both of those lines is this one here basically reverses the Y uh, value because when I had my Y, uh, as in my um, steering set up, the left was going right and the right was going left. So this essentially reverses that value. Now, what I've done with this, I've also mapped it to between 0 and 3000 because for some reason my Y values weren't allowing my steering servo to steer fully left and fully right. So by increasing the values down and up, it actually gives me the full range of motion. But you, again, you may need to play around with that. You might find the 1000 to 2000 works for you. You may need to play around with that. So see how you get on. Switch value. Uh, is 0 or 1 and we're mapping that to between 1000 and 2000 that way um, if you want to map that to a port you can do that and then it'll give either an on, off, on or an off value to, to whatever you're uh, communicating with and then again with the pot value joystick map to be 1000 and 2000 which is essentially between off and on. I then do a load of serial prints just to check that, but again, you can comment those out once you're finished. So we're now to the point where we write out to the um, speed controllers and the servo. So the, the thrust, 
uh, servos we've allocated, which is actually the, the thrust um, ESC. We write microseconds and then it's the X value again with the rudder, microseconds and the Y value, but in this case it's a servo. And then the hover, which is another ESC, is the pot value. Uh, which we've uh, everything apart from the the rudder which we've opened up the the top and bottom values on everything else is between a thousand two thousand microseconds so if for any reason there's no signal it writes the led pin high it increments a counter uh, by one now because we don't want this to kick in like when one or two um, uh, packets are lost um, because obviously this is transmitting uh, quite a few times every second. I've basically upped the counter to above 500 which gives me a, you know a, a probably two three seconds before it actually kicks in and then if it kicks in it puts the x value to the, the default value, the y value to the default value etc etc and depending on whether it's higher or, or lower than that value it will increment or decre decrement accordingly. Um, now I've done it so that it, it doesn't just go from whatever I've got to the default value straight away, it will come down, I say slowly, quite quickly, so it's not a sudden stop. Um, now again I've set the switch up, which I've mentioned previously, so that if the switch is off, the, the pot value, which is the hover, will um, decrease, but if the switch is turned on, then the pot value will stay exactly as it is when it came through on the serial monitor, on the transmitter. Um, that way, if I'm on uh, concrete, for example, it will turn off um, and it'll just sit there. But if I'm on water, although the rudder and the thrust won't work, the hover will still continue um, to allow the fact that it will sit on the water and it won't suddenly sink. Um, and again, I've got some serial print lines which will come through if the if there's no reception going on. Um, and this is just the writing the same thing as before, which we had up here. Um, but this time it's the values that come across if there's no signal. And then again, I had a delay at the end, but this delay is basically half of whatever the, the transmitter is, just because I find that works quite well. Um, and that's essentially it. Um, it's quite a long-winded explanation and I hope it has made sense. Um, obviously, if you have any questions, please let me know. Um, and yeah, you, you know, there's a few things that I might change in my Mark II code um, and you may even find things that work better for you. So this isn't a definitive how to do, this is literally a how I have done it. Okay, thanks for listening.